all new today. It happened to this family. You left your house locked up and somebody just moved in. It could happen to you. Did the police throw them out? They were not able to do anything. They're living in your house uninvited. And we can't make them leave. Oh my God, this is America. This is crazy. Plus, they call their adult daughter a freeloader and want her out. You are living in a home that's owned by your parents. And they're living over the garage. Let's do it. Why don't we stop all the drama, stop all the fighting, and let's go get you better. Here we go. Have a good show, everybody. If I can help get this family back on track, are you willing to do that? Ready, three, take. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. in America, approximately 40,000 people lose their jobs. Now think about that, 40,000 people. Right now, there are 15 million homes that are sitting empty because they are not able to be sold due to the economy. But wait until you hear this incredible, outrageous story of how one family has been affected. Now, you ready for this? Here it is. All right, dad gets a job offer in another state so they lock up the home that they were unable to sell in time. Mom packs up the family and they all move for a new opportunity. But while they're gone, a strange family actually moves into their home, the one that they had locked up for the winter. And they now claim it belongs to them and that they bought it. Now these alleged squatters refuse to move out. Now, nightmare scenarios like this can and do happen. Listen to this headline-making story. When the Donovan family moved back to Colorado, they found people living in their Littleton home. Those inside wouldn't budge. The family claimed they had bought it. They said they paid this man, Alfonso Carrillo. He's accused of repeatedly taking over homes he doesn't own, then selling them or renting them out. The Donovans have never met Alfonso Carrillo, but investigators believe he targeted them as part of a massive real estate scam. He allegedly sold or rented out properties that he didn't own, including the Donovans' Littleton home, which they left during a brief move to Indiana. What happened here is not an isolated case. We found homes being occupied by squatters all up and down the front range. The Donovans won possession of their home in court last month, but a series of legal hurdles have stalled the process. The family of four continues to live in a relative's basement. We just want to resume our life. Think about it now. We've got a husband and a wife, their children, and they're just bouncing around living out of suitcases while somebody else is in their home. Take a look. People stole our home, and we can't make them leave. We felt extremely angry and completely shocked. We had no idea that somebody could literally break in and start living in our home. When we got back to Colorado, we were broke. We had to borrow the money to deal with the issue. Just everything that could possibly go wrong has gone wrong. This is our home. I, I built this whole wall. I did everything to this house myself. Yet, I feel like I'm a criminal standing here just because of the fact that I want my house back. It's really been a living hell. A lot of crying, it's a lot of screaming, it's a lot of anger, and it doesn't seem like there's an end in sight. Oh, it's the worst thing you can imagine. We are currently staying in a hotel. Put the bag in there. There you go. I often feel like it's the end of the world. I'll never recover from having to go through this. I feel violated. I feel like I am a victim of a crime, but it's just um, agonizing to look at the condition of the home, and we're still trying to get back in it. I still cry every day and wonder, how am I going to emotionally get over this? OK, so you left your house locked up, and somebody just came along and moved in. Yes. They're just living in your house. They've just taken over our home and just... You didn't sell it. We didn't no. sell it. You didn't receive any money for selling it. No. 
No. You didn't lease it. You didn't rent it. And by the way, this home wasn't in foreclosure. No, it was not. In fact, y'all had just taken a fair amount of money and upgraded everything in the house in order to sell it, right? Correct. Correct. But it didn't sell by the time you left, so you button up and leave, and they just moved in. How, how did you find out? We didn't find out until um, about five months after we left to go to Indiana. And I just had a strange premonition in February of this year. And I told my husband, you know, we need to, we haven't heard from the neighbors for a while. We need to reach out to them. And Troy made that phone call to our, one of our neighbors. How long had they been in the house when you found out that they were in it? They moved in November of 2011. So literally, my stepfather went in there the third week of October, winterized the home, and within a two-week period after that, they had been placed in the home. Okay, so they're there for November, December, January, and February. There's somebody living in your home, and you don't even know it. We're nope. not aware of it. Um, that's just unbelievable. It is. Okay, so, so then you try to get them out, right? Call the local police department over there, because... When I talk sure. to my neighbor, he says, I'm glad to see you've sold your home or rented it out. And I'm like, uh, no, we haven't. And so we sent the police over there, and they produced their adverse possession documents. At that point, the uh, police read them and called us back and said, there's nothing we can do. They showed us these documents, and we can't remove them from your home. Here's what I understand adverse possession to mean. It is a law whereby a person can gain legal title to real property they don't originally own by exclusively occupying it for a prescribed amount of time. It's like if there's an abandoned property and somebody just moves into it and stays there long enough, there is a theory under which they can kind of claim that it's now theirs. But those elements of that law were not met in your case. This wasn't an abandoned property. No, it was not. You mean you're entitled to leave your house without somebody coming in and taking it over. Right. Um, so did the police throw them out? They did not. They were not able to do anything. They just said, we have to go through an eviction process. Right, which you did. Which we did when we returned to Colorado at the beginning of June. So right. why aren't they gone? They filed an appeal and, believe it or not, countersued us for we don't know what, which the, there's a dollar limit amount on that that then will bump it up to a county case. So they strung it out. It was a it was a time tactic to get it strung out. So to... they countersued you. Yeah. Yes. You've never done any business with them. No, don't. Not at all. They're living in your house uninvited. Correct. And they sued you. They 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 tried to or they're going to try to. We still don't know what they have up their sleeve. So Okay. Yeah. Well, we we asked for some help here. We've got a real estate lawyer here, Zach Shore. And uh, Zach Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Make sense out of this for me. Well, there's a lot going on here, obviously. Uh, on one level, they, you know, obviously these people in their home have no right to be there. Right. You know, they came in there under false pretenses. And, but there is this idea that you've talked about, which is adverse possession. And so you can claim an ownership interest in property after a long period of time if you're there and sort of treat it as your own. What happened here is that the police get involved and they see that document and they, can, they don't have the ability to handle that, right? It has to go to the court system which is what they had to do, and they have to go through the formal eviction process, which is, especially in this situation, just frustrating. And now I understand that you got through some of that, got it unraveled, but then they filed bankruptcy. Yes. And correct. now that's a federal proceeding, and that stays everything else, right? It that, does. That puts a stop sign up. It does. There's an automatic stay. That means everybody has to stop. And I think what the, the person living in the house had listed the house as one of her assets, so that made it even more sort of can't touch this. Meantime, you're living on the floor. Yes. Wow. All right. Troy and Dana say being forced from their own home by squatters has left them not only homeless, but also in a state that could have deadly consequences. You're going to find out what I mean by that when we come back. When we came back, we were pretty much broke. We didn't have any money, borrowed money from family members, which now we are indebted to. My biggest fear right now is being without a home. These 
these people stealing our home, it's caused a lot of tension in my family. My children are being adversely affected by it. To wake up on a basement floor on a blow-up mattress with your daughters laying next to you, sleeping, it's heartbreaking. It's something that's etched on their memory for the rest of their lives. It makes you feel like you're really failing, even though you're trying to do the right thing. Maybe this is the end for us. Maybe it's the end for our family. Basically wanting to just give up. See, it's hard knowing that you just don't want to live anymore. Well, that was Troy and Dana talking about how devastating losing their home to alleged squatters has been for them and their two young daughters. Now, Troy and Dana still have no idea when they will be able to move back into the home that they never sold, never leased, they just went out of town to work. I'm sorry this happened. My God, this is, this is America. This is crazy. You've actually thought about taking your own life. This has gotten to you so badly. I Talk have. Talk to me about that. It's just I felt like I planned my life accordingly. You know, I waited to have a child until my 30s, and we had a home, and um, had our second child a little bit later after that and just invested in this home and felt like we were doing the right thing financially and it's just been devastating to know that everything that we've done has been ripped away by a few people and it's hard to process that and to watch my children ask me when when are we going to get back into our home who's living in our home why why are they doing this to us and i have to say I don't know. There's people in the world that want something for free, and we've been victims. I don't know how to explain it to them. I want to talk to you about this, because this is not OK. What you're saying to me and what you're saying to yourself is not OK, and I want that to stop right now. You guys, when you're in a problem, when you got a problem, you go, oh my god, what if? You know, well, well, what if it doesn't ever work out? Well, what if we don't ever get back in our home? Or what if I lose my job? Or what if I get a divorce? Or what if, you know, whatever. People play the what if game, but they never play it out to the end. And monsters live in the dark. And when you play it out to the end, it's never as bad as what you imagined at the time. Now, what you've done is you have just put brick and mortar on an equal footing with your life. Look at that house. nice house. It's, it's brick. It's wood. It's a pile of inanimate things. It is not on a par with your life. Are you kidding me? No. Look at that picture right there. I know. Now, you're telling me that it's over? You're done? You've thought about killing yourself because somebody took that house away from you? Look at those children. Let me tell you, home is right there in your lap. I know. And I know. nobody can take that away from you. It's, it's just, that is the idea of my children possibly not having a place to live, us not recovering from this, and what if Dana, something... Stop. They have a place to live. It's in their mother's lap. It's in their father's arms. They have a place to live. You don't have the right to talk about ending your own life, and I don't want to hear you say that another time, and don't you let her say that another time. I'm not going to. Don't let her say that another time. Okay. Now, since I'm up on my soapbox, let me preach about one more thing here. You've got to change your language. You, when I read through all of the notes, you know, we asked you all a million questions, and you were so honest and forthcoming. But I was shocked at the things that you said. You said, stupid.